God is good. Amen. No, God is good. And all the time. Okay, are you happy? Yes. You don't sound like happy. Amen. 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 That's good. That's good. Okay, we, we are going to study something today. We are going to see from a, from the Bible. You see, many a times what happens is um, there are times in our Christian life that we go through the deepest sorrows in our life. Right? We don't understand what's happening in our life. We don't understand why it is happening in our life. And uh, we tend to question everything. Hmm? Why this sorrow? Why this sickness? Why these worries? Why this struggle? Why this shame? Why are these difficulties in my life? Financial problems, my sickness and my job and my business and, and my education, my family. So most of the time, you know what happens is, uh, there are times that we go through such kind of situation and uh, we ask such questions, why? 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 Right? I want to talk to you uh, today, but before that we have to understand one thing. If you study the Bible, and if you will read some of the biographies of great men of God, you know what you find is these are the people who were walking, those who were very close to God. They were in fact going through deeper sorrows in their lives. Some of them went through uh, a, a, a severe sicknesses. Some of them went through much persecutions in their life. Those of the greatest devotion may know the deepest darkness in their life. Those of greatest devotion may know the deepest darkness in their life. Those who are very close to God, they will understand the deepest darkness in their life. Turn your Bibles to the book of Job and see in Job chapter uh, 19 verse 8. The word of God says, He had fenced up my way that I cannot pass. And he had set darkness in my path. You see, there is darkness in the life of Job now. When you study the life of Job, you come to understand, Oh, this man was having everything. He enjoyed everything. And then what happened? Now we, when we see after that, when we, now when we see about his life, he is going through the deepest darkness of his life. And he says, He has fenced up my way that I cannot pass. And he has set darkness in my path. You see, that's the truth. That's what I said. Those of the greatest devotion may know the deepest darkness in their life. Book of Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 2 says, O Lord, how long shall I cry? And thou wilt not hear, even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou wilt not save. You see, Habakkuk is now crying unto the Lord. Say, O oh Lord, how long shall I cry? You know, there is a song, a hymn, How much longer will you hide yourself from me? How long must I face this struggle? How much longer will this sorrow fill my heart? How long must I fight this battle? You heard that hymn? Okay, this is a song that we should sing. And, and here Habakkuk writes and he says, O Lord, how long shall I cry? And thou will not hear, even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou will not save. You see, what we find is, here, these people, we saw about Job, we see about Habakkuk. Habakkuk is going through much violence in his life and struggles and battles in his life. He's crying out and God and he says, God, thou will not hear me. Job is saying, Thou hast put a fence that I might not pass. There is darkness, he says. How does God develop our faith in darkness? And what should we do when darkness encompasses our life? I'd like to talk to you today on the topic, What do you do when the lights go off? What do you do 
when the lights go off. You know, many a time we are so happy. Oh, everything is fine in my life. God has been so good to me. Uh, God has been so good. How about when, when there is something that's not going well in your life and struggle is going, happening, when there is struggle that is surrounded in your life and everything, everybody is against you and someone puts some kind of blames on you and, and disappointment, discouragement comes and, and just covers you up. How are you going to fight this? How will God use that discouragement, disappointment, that worries and darkness of my and your life? How will God use it to increase and develop my faith? And why does God allow such things in our life? And when this types of circumstances comes in our life and when darkness comes in our life, what do you do? What do you do when the lights go off? Turn your Bibles to the book of Isaiah, chapter 50. Book of Isaiah, chapter 50, verse 10. 5-0. Book of Isaiah, chapter 50, verse 10. And the word of God says, Would you please stand for the reading of God's word? Who is among you that feareth the Lord? That obeyeth the voice of his servant, that walketh in darkness and has no light, let him trust in the name of the Lord and stay upon his God. And all God's people said, Amen. Father, we thank you and praise you for this time. O oh God, there are times that we go through darknesses in our life that encompasses us and and we, we find it difficult to understand what to do and how, it's go, how we are going to benefit in our spiritual life. Today speak to us and O oh Lord, may this message be an encouragement to our life, to each one of us over here. We promise that thou will take all the glory. We will not touch thy glory, O Master. Father, we ask you to speak to us as we listen to thy word. In Jesus' sweet name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. What do you do when the lights go off? When you read in Isaiah chapter 50, verse 10, the word of God says, Who is among you that feareth the Lord? It is not written to those who are, not, uh, who are rebellious. It is not written to hypocrites. It's not written to people who are disobedient to God's word. It is written, this verse is speaking about a man of God, a woman of God, who fears God and who loves God. Who is among you that feareth the Lord, that obeyeth the voice of His servant? Are you obedient to the preaching of God's word? When your preacher preaches the word, God's word, do you take it as this is from God and are you obedient to it? Do you sit here with a critical mind? Oh, let me see what wrong he is preaching. Or are we sitting here and saying, Lord, speak to me through your servant that it might be a be it, be it might be benefits to my spiritual growth, that, I, that it will develop my faith, increases my faith. This is written to those who fear God and who, who obey God's word. Amen? Amen. So it is possible, my friend, as we read about Habakkuk, as we read about Job, these were the people who had greatest devotion with God. They were close to God. They have an intimate relationship with God. And now we, they see themselves to be in darkness, where, the, where everything seems darkness in their lives, filled with battle, filled with violence, filled with um, uh, uh, difficulties, filled with... Um, sickness in their life. We find Job has lost everything. And Job is having all sore on his body where the worms are out on from his, wound, from, from his wounds. His friends mock at him. His wife has asked him to curse his God and die. His children are dead. His servants are dead. His properties, his wealth, everything is gone. Habakkuk faces battle every day and he's crying unto God and he's saying, Does God hear my cry? How long, Lord? How long will I fight this battle? 
There are times that we all go through such situations in our life that we don't understand what to do when all these things happen in our life. When everything looks dark, Lord, what will I do? Why is all this happening in my life? What is next? And how will you go through such situation? If you obey God's word, if you fear God, and if you are going through such situations, then this is what God wants you to know. The Bible says, Who is among you that feareth the Lord, that obeyeth the voice of His servant? That walketh in darkness. And has no light. See. This is a man. This is a person. This is the question is. To those who fear God. And who obeys the word of God. And who obeys the, uh, the very. Uh, obeys the voice of his servant. These are good Christians. These are godly people. But they are going through darkness in their life. They're going through darkness in their life. And God says, Are you the one who fears me? Are you the one who obeys the voice of my servant? And you're going through darkness and you have no light and you don't understand what to do in your life and you don't understand why this is happening in your life. I want you to do two things. That's what God is telling you. There are two things that we have, God expects that you and I do when we are going through difficulties. When the lights go off, God wants you and me to do two things. As it is written in this word of God. Let him trust in the name of the Lord and stay upon his God. Amen. Let him trust in the name of the Lord. And stay upon his God. Turn your Bibles to the book of Proverbs chapter 3. Book of Proverbs chapter 3. Today brother Patrick preached on it. And, uh, uh, and I'm going to take the same verse. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5. And I hope you have memorized this verse. <coughs> Sorry. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding. The word of God says, first thing when you're going through darkness in your life and there is no light. What you need to do is trust in the Lord. Amen. Amen. You know the trust, the word is T-R-U-S-T. Trust in the Lord. And if you just take away the T, what remains? Rust. When you don't trust in the Lord, you become a rusted Christian. Amen? Amen? And so God wants you and me to trust in the Lord. And not to lean on our own understanding. Oh, I'm going to do like this. I'm going to do like that. I'm going to do so. I'm going to say so. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. My friends, we live by promises and not by explanations. You don't deserve explanations. We need to live by promises. The word of God says, Your father and your mother may forsake you, but I will never forsake you. Amen? Amen. And so we need to cling on to the promises of God. I will never forsake you. The Bible says, The young lions may lack, but they that seek the Lord shall lack nothing. Amen? Amen? The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all things shall be added unto you. Amen? Amen. These are the promises of God. And so when we don't understand everything, when we are going through difficulties and, and, and darknesses in our life, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Live by the promises. Cling unto the promises and say, yes. This is what the word of God says. And I am going to trust in the Lord. Because I know my God will not let me down. Amen. Amen. We live by promises, not by explanation. My friend, when heaven is silent, what you need to do is you need to walk by faith and not by sight. You may be praying. Darkness is all, all over your life. 
You don't understand what is going through. And you are praying and you find that your prayers are not answered. When heaven is silent, walk by faith and not by sight. Amen? Amen. Amen. So first thing what you see is you trust in the Lord. Second thing what we read in Isaiah chapter 50 verse 10. We read the word of God. Take it again and just read it again. Who is among you that feareth the Lord? That obeyeth the voice of his servant? That walketh in darkness and has no light? Let him trust in the name of the Lord. You see, my friend, when you are trusting in God, the trust simply means there is no place of doubt in it. Like the, like the examples that I give, the illustration, um, the child is on a parapet up, up in, a, in, in a higher place and the father is down. Huh? And, and the distance is re really big. The, dot, the child is up there and the father is down here. And the father says, jump. It's a fearful thing. Yet the child directly jumps. You know why? Because the child trusts the father completely. Amen? Completely. There's no doubt. We need to have... A faith like a child. A trust like the child. The child that trusts the Father. And so God expects that we trust in God the Father. In our Lord Jesus Christ. When we are going through the darkness. As I said once. Uh, a, a child. Um, a father and son. Were going through. Uh, during the time where there was war. going. You know the world war was going on. And the father was taking the ch son. And walking through. And there were debris. And there was. You know what do you call for that. Where the people hide. Uh, trenches. You know. There's a pit there. And they have to actually cross over. And it's dark time. It's in the evening. In the night time. And they have to cross the other side. And if they want to cross the other side. They have to get down into this pit. And then go to the other place. And so the father says to the son. You stay up here. I'm getting down. Okay. Then I will take you. Now it's dark. It's absolutely dark. And it's difficult to see each other at that moment because it's night and there was no electricity in those days. It's all darkness. The father gets down into the pit and the father says to the son, Son, you jump, I'm going to hold you up. The son cannot see. The father says, Son, you jump. And the son jumps. You know why? Because he trusts in the father. Amen? Amen? And then they were able to cross the other side. When darkness is in your life. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. The second thing what you see in these verses. You need to stay, uh, stay upon God. Stay upon God. Which means lean upon God. Stay upon God. That's like uh, we see in John chapter 13 verse 24, 25, 26. What happened? We see John the beloved leaning on the breast of Jesus Christ. It is better to stay in the darkest valley with God. Than to be in the peak of the sun without God. Amen. Amen. I would rather be alone in dark with God. Than to be in the, in the assembly of the wicked. And filled with lights made by men. And live in sin. I would rather be alone in the darkest corner. Just with God. That is all that you and I need to have. Lean upon God. Amen. Amen. Stay upon God. It is better, my friend, to stay in the darkest valley with God than to be in the peak of the sun without God. Some things are seen in the dark that which cannot be seen in the light. 
We may say, oh, it's everything dark in my life and all the difficulties. You know what? When you are going through the darkest time in your life, God is silently teaching you and showing you a lot of things. Amen? Amen. You don't see the star in the daytime. You don't see the moon in the daytime. It's only when it is dark and you lift up your neck above and your head up. And what do you see up there in the sky? You see the stars and you see the moon shining so bright. Amen. It's only in the dark time some things are seen which cannot be seen in the light. It is better for you to be leaning on God and staying upon God and trusting upon God in the darkness than standing alone in man-made light. You know why? See in verse 11 what it says. Isaiah chapter 50 verse 11. Behold all ye that kindle a fire. That compass yourselves about with spark. Walk in the light of your fire. And in the sparks that ye have kindled. This shall ye have of my hand. Ye shall lie down in sorrow. There are times, sometimes the darkness that comes in our life is because God has allowed it. Because God wants to show us something. And that God wants you and me to trust upon Him. And to stay upon Him. Amen. 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 And during those times of darkness, God wants to show and reveal a lot of things in our life. And if we are not content with it, and if we are not satisfied in God, and if we are not going to trust upon God, and lean upon God, and stay upon God, and, and by our own wisdom and knowledge, if we just keep light or our own fire, and put our own spark, God says you are going to Lie down in sorrow. Today we see this. The greatest curse for the preaching of the gospel. Is charismatic light. There is light in charismatic preaching. But it's not the light of the gospel. It's not the light of the world. Which God wants it to have. It is a man made light. A temporary pleasure. And they will lie in sorrow. When there is darkness, sometimes God allows sickness in our life. God allows difficulties in our life that we may grow closer to Him. That we may stay upon Him. That we may trust in Him. God, if God gets the glory, you need to be satisfied with that. Amen? Amen. Don't light your own fire when God has ordained darkness in your life. Sometimes God allows because He gets the glory. Don't light your own fire, my friend. Oh, I know what I'm doing. I know I'm more smarter than others. I have more knowledge than others. Pride. If God has ordained darkness, be in darkness alone with God. Then to light your own fire and be with the man of wickedness. Amen? Amen. For example, if you want to say, we find that God told Abraham, Abraham, I'm going to bless you with a promised seed. But what Abraham did? He lighted his own fire. And got married to whom? Hagar. And what happened? Sorrow. There's fight even till today. Consequences of lighting your own fire. God told Abraham, trust upon me, lean upon me, stay upon me. I am going to give you a son for you and for Sarah. A promised seed. Abraham lighted his own fire, got married to Hagar and what happened? He gave birth and she gave birth to Ishmael. Sorrow. Fight between Israel and Palestine all the time. The Jews and the Muslim. Then we find Moses. Moses went. He saw what? He saw the first day. He saw the Hebrew. Fighting with the Egyptian. And what Moses did? He killed that Egyptian. The next day he went and he saw that both Hebrews are fighting. 
What he did? He lighted his own fire. And then what happened? For the next 40 years, he has to flee in the wilderness and be there. For lighting his own fire. Simon Peter. What he did? He betrayed Christ. And then all, he was weeping there. But we thank God. Yet his mercy endureth forever. Amen. Amen. If your son, I mean, I'm telling you my friend. There are times that you and I will go through such darknesses in our life. Because there are times that God wants to spend time alone with you. And to get your attention. Because when all things is well. You don't give time to God. You, you think everything is fine with you. And you don't even wa- you don't want to even have an intimate time with God. And so God ordains darkness in your life. That you may walk with Him. And talk with Him. And spend an intimate relationship with Him. Amen. Amen. Don't light your own fire. Don't use your wisdom. Use the wisdom of God. The word of God says, Trust in the Lord and stay upon Him. That's the wisdom. You know what? When darkness comes in your life, it's not going to endure forever. You may be going through struggles and difficulties. You may not understand. Why are my relatives against me? Why are my families against me? Why this financial difficulty? Why sickness all the time? Why all these worries in my life? Why is all darkness in my life? And is it going to go on and on in my life all the time? No, my friend. That's not the truth. The truth is, if your sun is set, it will rise again. Amen. Amen. If the sun sets today, this evening, tomorrow morning, it's going to rise again. Turn your Bible to the book of Psalms chapter 30. Book of Psalms chapter 30. And see what the Bible says. I don't know if I'm encouraging somebody today. I don't know if you're going through darkness in your life. But you know what? If God is ordained darkness, stay there with Him. Stay there with Him. Don't light your own fire. You will lean. You will lie down in sorrow, my friend. Psalm chapter 30 verse 5 says, For His anger endureth but a moment. In His favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy cometh in the morning. Amen? Amen. Joy cometh in the morning. Weeping may endure for a night. Darkness may be there ordained by God for a season. But the light will arise. The day star will arise in your life. Amen. Amen. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy cometh in the morning. Stay upon the Lord. Lean upon God. The darkness won't be all the time. Sometimes God ordains darkness because He wants to get your attention. When darkness comes in your life, lean upon Him. Trust upon the Lord and stay upon the Lord. Amen. Amen. Don't light your own fire. Don't kindle your own fire. Don't have your own spark of light. If you do so, you will lie in sorrow. Stay upon God. Trust upon the Lord. Whatever the Bible says, walk according to it. Okay? Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Amen? Amen. Keep that in mind. Psalm chapter 30 verse 5. May the Lord add many more blessings. Every eyes closed, every head bowed, shall we pray. Father, we thank you for this time. Lord, We all go through darkness in our life, struggles in our life, and we do not understand why such things happen. But we know, God, today that if if, if the darkness is ordained by God, by you, Lord, help us to trust in you and stay upon you, God. And that we may live by the promises of the word of God, that we may walk by faith, O Master, For we believe that weeping may endure for a night, 
and joy cometh in the morning. We give you all the glory, O God of heaven. We thank you for Jesus in our life. We thank you for the shed dead blood on the cross of Calvary. We thank you, O God, for the Holy Spirit that indwells in us. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for your holy inspired word that you have given us. In Jesus' sweet name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the communion of the Holy Ghost abide with you all now and forever. And all God's people said, Amen. And again, Amen. And again, Amen. Amen. God bless you and love you.